Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com for this special edition of knitting and today we're going to discuss the tools. Before we can get here we need to see what we need to buy in order to participate in knitting for the very first time. So we're going to continue our series today and today is all about the tools. In today's Let's Knit series we're going to talk about the tools and I found myself staring mindlessly at the pegboard of the yarn tools for knitting. It's called implements as, as the technical word for it. So what I found with myself is that I was staring what size knitting needles do I need? What do I need for knitting needles? There's more than one type. There's all kinds of things on the pegboard that I don't really know what they are. So I had to investigate and determine what exactly do I need in order to go from the, the knitting needle to this project. So what we're going to talk about today is all the tools that are based basic that you may find on the pegboard, what you need, what you think you can need later and how to make it kind of cheap on the go. You don't know at this point if you're going to love knitting. So I would not say go hog crazy and buy everything. So today I'm going to talk about the tools, what they are and whether you need them right away or not. So I'm pacing back and forth on the pegboard trying to determine what I'm going to use for my knitting experience and what I'm looking at is circular knitting needles. I'm looking at the regular ones that I would normally see that I associate with um, knitting. I also see knitting ones that have two points on both sides. I'm really not sure what those are for and then I'm seeing that there's different sizes. So it's an, it's like crochet in many ways. There's all kinds of different sizes of crochet hooks and so many different sizes of the knitting needles. So I found myself staring. I'm thinking where am I going to start? So the actual answer is you don't start here. You start back at the yarn. So let's go back to the yarn and let's determine that before we go here. So the answer lies on the yarn that you want to use as your play yarn. So you want to buy yarn that's not too expensive that you're not concerned about ruining. So a lot of people say don't waste the yarn. You know what? You cannot help but waste yarn in the learning process because the fact is is that you're going to have to retry a few times in order to make it work. I highly recommend Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn because it is a thick yarn and let me just uh, show you this in my hand. It's got a nice twist to it and also it's it's thick. So when I'm going to learn the process of of using this uh, yarn is that I don't have to be really dainty by using something that is ultimate, ult ultimately thin. Now the advantage to buying yarn like this is that this is made by the, a main manufacturer that follows the consistency of telling you exactly what you need. So more of the higher end yarns of the exclusive yarn so they don't actually provide that kind of information that you're going to need it in order to go back to the knitting needle shelf. So unless you're familiar with the yarn weights then that's going to be a little bit of a, a process in order for you to do. So what you have to do is you have to rotate the ball to this right here and let's uh, just zoom in and show you what you're looking at. Now this here is telling the story of what you need for the yarn needles. So the knitting needles and you also have the crochet hook. Now for the crochet side I'm always pointing at here but we're going to go over here to the middle one. I know it might scare you a little bit. So this is telling you information that is really critical to the knitting needle sizes that you want to select. So here they've determined that an 8 millimeter, okay that's a metric uh, d uh, number or US 11 that's United States. So US 11 is the recommended size for this thickness of yarn. So the bulky is telling you what bulky weight that it is. Okay so this could be all the way from 1 to 7. So it's a number 6 and that's determining the thickness of the yarn. So you can also see the crochet hook while we're here. It's also an 8 millimeter uh, also a US uh, uh, size L or 11 and then it has washing instructions just like so and this is telling you that it is acrylic. So what you have to determine is that this is actually telling you the gauge and we're going to uh, talk about that in a future video but and actually a little bit in this video because we're going to talk about a gauge tool. But this is telling you how many stitches that it will take to go 4 inches across. So it's 11 stitches across and then it's 14 rows in the height in order to get a 4 by 4 inches. So it's a 4 by 4 inches square. So that's your gauge and most professional um, designs have the gauge and this kind of matches their gauge if it's done correctly. So this will tell you this is what I need. I need an 8 millimeter or a US 11 knitting needle and now I can tromp back over to the knitting needles and then we can go and look from there. So in the knitting needle sizes you're going to see an 8 millimeter right here and you're going to see a much thinner one here. Now that recommendation is just a recommendation. It is what's recommended for that thickness of yarn but you can always change to go higher or lower. So if you decide to increase your your knitting needle size, your stitches will be looser, your project will be much bigger. So if you're, for example, you were doing a scarf, you used a bigger size than what was recommended in the pattern and recommended in the yarn ball, your scarf is going to be a lot wider. Also it will be a lot longer. 
if you decide to make it as long. So if you go thinner then what's gonna happen is that there's going to be a lot uh, narrower. Okay, so if you're following the exact same pattern and you use a smaller hook or a smaller knitting needle the work is gonna be much uh, narrower in the width and it will take you that much longer in order to get the length. So you can I increase or decrease but when you do so it has a pros and cons. So whether you wanna be looser with a bigger or if you wanna be a lot more tight and you may struggle a little bit because especially with this size uh, then that's completely up to you. It's not abnormal but it is completely optional. So let's move over to the types of uh, materials used in a particular needle. There's a few types. So there's different types of knitting needles. So first of all we have bamboo or it could be wood and this is actually not a bad needle and the thing about it is that it's nice and light. So that's a great option but when it gets really thin like these, these kind of get brittle and unless you have a lot of, if you have a lot of uh, tension on your hands you could eventually snap it. So that's one of those things you have to understand your own um, pressure when you're going to do it before you invest in a thin one like that in wood. So then there's also resin. It's like a plastic and this is this one here and uh, what happens in this particular one is that it's durable, it's nice but they can be heavier than wood so they can actually make you a little bit more exhausted uh, with it but this is really quite common with doing the resin. Then you can also have a steel or aluminum uh, hook just like this and these are heavier than these two here and they have their pros and cons. So as far as warping when it comes to wood and such as bamboo if you don't store these properly what happens is that you can end up with having a slight warp in your project. You might see here because I've not stored it properly and I've had this many years but it's got a slight bend in it here. It's still usable for me but if you get a severe warp on this it gets really quite difficult to do. So you just have to be paying attention to here even the resin can warp depending on how you're gonna store it but then the, the steel ones here it takes a lot of effort in order to get the warp. So you have the, the ones for myself I'm going to be using resin throughout my uh, particular one here. Maybe as I get better I will go to the wood ones here but I'm going to try to avoid doing the aluminum or steel within today's uh, within this uh, particular series because I think that these two are my better options and that's more of a personal choice that's really up to me. So let's talk about the style of your knitting needle. So you can have a conventional one here. It's got one point and it's got a stopper at the end and you need two of those in order to play. So it doesn't matter at this point. We're gonna talk about the style and not the material of your, your particular uh, knitting needle at this time. So you use two of these in tandem with each other and the length of it determines on how much um, um, project can fit onto these things. So for example if it only is going this much I can't really get too many stitches on here. I could probably get a dishcloth on here pretty easily but once it gets a lot of uh, stitches then this one is no longer an option. Now you're going to notice that there's different sizes of this one and let me just uh, get another one here. I'm gonna slide it in just to show you how long it is. So here it comes. Yes it's still coming, coming, coming. So it's much longer here and there's a disadvantage to these kind of uh, knitting needles in the end. So what happens is, is if the, this distance is way too long it happens to bang across things. It might bang on your legs, it could bang on your chest, could bang on a, on a sofa side. It can get quite on your nerves. So that's just one of the disadvantages of it. So you'll see different lengths that are available to you and you have to determine if you're in a position that you would rather use something more like this that we'll talk about because it's much shorter. So you have to really determine determine the length that you would really like to prefer, prefer to work with but it's then up to your project. So I could get this cloth on here pretty easily would not uh, make much of a difference but if this was much longer and I was doing a dish cloth I think that would be kind of an in inconvenient thing for me. So let's move along to your next needle. So the next needle is a double pointed. So it's pointed on both sides and these are used for going in circular motion. So for example you're doing mitts or you're doing hats where it's a continuous revolution without a, a seam line then what happens is that you use multiples of these. So you're gonna use a, four of these at the same time. So three of them will be in a triangle format making the circle around and then the fourth one is the one that you're going to use in order to knit and you're gonna transfer the one to the other and knit and eventually this one will be empty and then that will be the new one that you use as you rotate around to then knit the other one. So you're always gonna use three and the fourth is the one that you're going to knit with. Now there's another type, uh, type called uh, curved uh, double pointed needles and it's the same thing here but it's actually got a wicked curve to come in almost all the way back like a, like a, uh, like a Pac-Man uh, mouth. So it comes down and then back. 
That one there is also circular uh, uh, formation in order to work on the project and what happens is that you only use three of those. So instead of three three needles holding one project in that, in that particular configuration it will only be two and then the third one is then used to uh, be able to knit with. Now the advantage of the curved ones is that it doesn't stress the project because if you're going in a continuous circle and you're using straight lines it can actually provide stress to the project. So the curved ones provide a lot more relaxation to it. it takes you a bit getting used to. If you've never knitted for the first time I would consider trying that first before these and going that method but again that's completely optional to you. So what did this one? That's next. These are called circular knitting needles. Now until yesterday I did not realize what these were for. Okay I always thought these were for making hats but I couldn't figure out that the distance of this cord was so big that it would be bigger than a hat. So I was kind of thinking how am I going to do that? That doesn't make any sense and my logic sense of reasoning to it because I think some of you are going to think I'm quite stupid. Um, but I was thinking that like loom knitting it has a contraption and you go around and I was thinking that it all continually rotates around these. That's not the case. So with the, these particular items here remember how I talked about the knitting needles being really quite long? Well instead of it being really quite long so you can have like a really really big one here and you could do afghans and everything like that but you know what? Are you gonna do an afghan on a, on a knitting needle that's four feet long? No absolutely. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna use these instead and so you're as you work with the project you slide the, the loops down and it catches onto the cord and stays on the cord. And so eventually you kind of just work it like you normally would of just doing your knitting but you push it down. Once you get to the end then you just turn around. So instead of having ultra long knitting needles the circular are the way to go because then it, all the project can rest on your lap instead of being rested on uh, being the knitting needles being too long. So this is more of a convenient way to knit uh, as far as doing any kind of distance works of afghans and etc. And I think that you would really quite enjoy this. So if, in my case if I were you I would consider getting a set of these prior to getting a set of the other ones and of course if you want to do round things like mitts and, and hats then you definitely have to do the double pointed uh, knitting needles whether that is a straight one or you want to try the curved. So this is what these particular needles are for. So let's move along and let's talk about tips of the needles. So let's talk about the tips of the needles and this is usually dep depending on the brand itself. They are pretty consistent among brands and crochet hooks are the same way when you're going to buy crochet is that certain brands have different shapes of the heads of the crochet hooks if you look at it right here. So I like the this type versus the ones that are saw cut. Now you're gonna notice that there's different types of, of uh, tips. Okay, there's gonna be more blunt ones, there's gonna be quite sharp ones and there's gonna be a variation of that. So what you have to consider is that sometimes these can be ultimately sharp in the sense that it's not sharp if you're if you go like this and you're gonna bleed but what happens is that if your hands are brushing or your fingertips are brushing along the edge over time and it doesn't take a long time but you will get irritated that it's gonna start eventually kind of picking at you and maybe starting to scratch you. So you have to consider that and that's part of your yarn purchase when you're going to use this. So a, a sharper one has its advantages so if you're using a smaller um, thread size and um, you're using ones that like roving or anything that is requiring you to have a sharp edge then that's obviously advantage. So if your fingers are brushing up against the edge you're gonna have to change the way that you wrap it so that your fingers don't touch it as you go in order to prevent it. Now if it's more blunt like these things like uh, that would not bother me if I kept hitting it. Okay. So you have to determine the points and what I would do at the store is just kind of touch them. Look at the difference between the points because the points will probably make the difference of which ones that you select. Also you want to inspect your knitting needles as well so make sure that when you're doing it there's no burrs or anything abnormal on the tips. So just run your hands. If your hands are catching on anything then that means that it's got an imperfection and that I would leave it on the shelf and look for something else or maybe a, just a different package. So you want to make sure that the tips or anything along the sides here is not damaged so that you can slide yarn up and down and it's not snagging on any imperfections within the material. So let's look about, let's go and look at extra tools. Let's talk about tools. 
So the first thing is stitch knitting stoppers. So you're gonna notice that they're like a rubber thing and some of them look like socks. Some can be quite novelty but when you're not working on your knitting needles it's a stopper that you can put over top. For me I didn't think it was an emergency thing to purchase right off the bat so I left it on the shelf but maybe down the road I could do it. So after I've got my hardcore knitting done and I need to store it so I'm not quite done I would put a stopper over the edge. So if you were actually it's got two advantages. So if you were storing it and you put it in a bag and you wanted to carry it around instead of reaching into your bag and potentially stabbing yourself. The stopper kind of protects you from actually scratching yourself in order to um, reach into your bag. But it also, the stopper prevents the project from sliding off. So if the, the project uh, like I saw in the, in my other example here. So let me just show you here. So at the end of my work, so I've got everything slid down but it's possible if you're not careful that you could accidentally slide this off. The stopper helps prevent that. So that is one option and let's move along to cable needles. So here is a weird configuration here and this is a cable needle and what happens with these particular items here is that we want to have the stitches cross over top of each other but because knitting is all about consecutive stitches going across down the rod what happens is that you have to slide some stitches off, knit the next stitches and then slide the ones that you slid off in onto the onto the knitting needles. But if you slide it off and there's nothing to slide onto you can actually end up pulling out all your work. So what happens with these is that you, you slip it in and you slide the stitches on and the stitches rest in here and just hold. It allows you to work on the next part of the project uh, with ju just a few stitches and then you use this and you slide uh, the stitches off this again and put it onto the knitting needle so that you can knit with it. So it's more of a holder for you in order to do your cable work. There's different sizes available for you on this and there's also different shapes but this is generally what those look like. So those are cable needles and unless you're uh, gonna do cabling right away then that's something that you can wait for later. So this next one is called a stitch holder and honestly until yesterday I had no idea what this was. I, I really did not know what it, I thought I thought it was just a storage thing. I really wasn't sure. So anyway I had uh, my friend tell me what this is. So for example say in crochet we decide to do a vest. Okay and the vest has a break at the top of the neckline just like up here. Okay. So what happens in crochet we go along and then we go along and we just keep going back and forth and we refasten on and we keep going back. The problem with knitting is that you've used the same knitting needle to go all this distance. So even if you want it to um, start going up one side you can't because it's the same needle that's holding everything. So you just cannot pull this needle out and just suddenly go here because all these stitches will be exposed and eventually come out on you like, like pretty much instantly. So what this uh, contraption is is that you open it and you slide the stitches that are gonna hold. So once you get to this part here you're gonna just uh, take your count and you'll slide all of these stitches onto this and you'll lock it just like this and then you'll continue to work in your project. So this would be probably more like this. Okay. So you'll continue to work on your project going back up like this and you'll get it done. So this is just gonna rest and hold all these stitches. Once you get this done what happens is that you can then open this up, slide these stitches back onto the needle and then continue the other side so that it's completely seamless so you don't end up having a spot. So with crochet you can fasten on and fasten off really quite easily and you barely notice it. Here with knitting you can't do that so you have to use the same needle so you just have to use this as a temporary holding device and these are available in many different sizes and I found that there's different sizes within one package. So it depends on what you wanna do and I think this is quite a handy little tool. Again this is not an emergency uh, thing that you need to buy right away but it is definitely optional and hopefully you get what this means. So the next tool is a gauge tool. This is just a tape measure but I don't have a gauge tool here because I've never had to use one. So the reason for it is that you'll notice that the gauge tools have a circle uh, missing out of it and I'll have a dimension. So for example say here there's no dimension here on the knitting needle at all. What happens is that I can use that tool and stick this into a hole and determine its size. Quite handy if your, if your needles are not listed. So you can actually stick this through here and determine what the diameter is by sticking it in the gauge. So that's kind of handy. But it also has a gauge thing of measurement and there's a measuring tool on here. Let me turn this around. So there's a measuring tool on there and remember how I uh, said there's so many stitches for every four inches. So it'll have a, a sliding key here. So in the sliding key you lay it over top of your work and you're able to count how many stitches are across. And so it's a gauging tool 
tool to tell you if you're on gauge or whether you're too loose or too tight. So it's a great little tool. It's not something that you need right away unless that your knitting needles are not listed with the size. That's quite common um, for that especially with the high end stuff but most of the general uh, produced items like the manu um, uh, big manufacturers they pretty well label up all their knitting needles. So it's a great little tool completely optional and you don't need that right away. And finally the last tool is the stitch marker right here. So these are quite handy and you kind of need these in order to keep count. You don't need these right away. This is something that um, you can wait for further on down the road. So if you have to go a certain distance like I talked about in that vest where you only go a certain amount you might want to throw in a stitch marker. So the stitch markers what you have to watch for is that they're not too heavy. They're really quite loose. They're quite there's no sharp edges that's gonna ruin any of the fibers of your yarn and you're also gonna have to be able to close it or be able to clip onto it without, with ease without much um, to do. Now if they're too heavy what happens is that it pulls down on the yarn. So let me just get a piece of yarn here and just show you. So if it's just sitting on it great okay but if it's really heavy and it starts pulling on it you'll warp that stitch and so even when you pull it out it'll look like it's out of place and warped. So you wanna make sure that there's a lot of different novelty types of stitch markers out there and you wanna just pay attention to that and um, there's some really really cute ones I will not deny it. You won't need too many of these um, but it, there's packages that are just like a handful inside a package that's pretty much all you need unless you start losing them and this is a great little tool. So this is the basic run over over some of the tools. Um, there's also a tapestry needle Tapestry needles are, are, are really quite handy in order to get the final string in. So if you do a project this will allow you to hide your loose ends from the beginning uh, that you left for the tail as well as the end and any imperfections that you had through it that you'd require a needle in order to fix. So this is a definite one that you would want to get right away. So, so right off the bat you'll need a set of knitting needles. You'll have to decide whether you're gonna go for the straight or the circular. I would go circular if it was up to me. You're gonna need a tapestry and then a ball of yarn and then you can start to learn how to knit and then everything else I showed here is almost optional at this point until you're getting more and more serious into your crow or into your knitting. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com this is a special edition of learning how to knit.